Okay, this will be our last and final connected objects problem of this series. Uh, this problem, again, comes from our textbook that we're using. Uh, if you take a look, it's a pretty sweet one in terms of uh, you've got one, two, and three objects all to get, get to together. And you can see this object is going to fall, and when it does, it's going to move this object to the right and this object up here will then move to the left. So let's draw this problem out on a sheet of paper and see if we can work it. Oh yes, and by the way, there is friction between the two blocks. There's no friction under it, but there is friction between the two blocks. All right, so let's draw this out and then let's do a free body diagram for each one of them. All right, so our basic drawing it's going to look like, uh, hmm, may take me a second to draw this one actually. It's our pulley. Here is one block here. There's a second block sitting on top of it. There's another pulley over here off the wall. So we've got one cord runs this way, this way, runs over the top and to the large, wow that's a horrible circle but we're going to go with it anyway. And we've got a 2 kilogram, a 3 kilogram, and then a 10 kilogram hanging off the edge and the mu between the two blocks is equal to 0.3. And this problem, like all the others I worked, I kind of wish I'd found one where maybe we had an acceleration, but like usual, I'm going to go with what is the tension, what is the acceleration in this problem. So we're going to start by drawing three free body diagrams. One, two, three, four, five. Let's see if we can get this started. There's really no way to make this part too exciting. Just me drawing little crosses here. Little crosshairs. Now, if you want, we can start with this object first for our free body diagram. It's obviously going to be the easiest one of all of them to draw. All we've got to do, we've got, let's see, we've got a tension going up and a, I'm going to say M3G going down. So I'm going to say that I wrote 2, but I meant 3. So I'm going to say that M3 is 10 kilograms. Uh, M2 is 3 kilograms. And M1, I'm going to call the 2 kilogram weight in this problem. Now, here's the thing. We've got more than one string in this problem or cord. So this tension will be the same and these tensions over here will be the same. So what we've got to notice is that we're going to have a tension 1 in this problem and a tension 2. We've got two different cords. So for this object here holding it up, I'm going to call that tension 1. So T1 holding that object up. And you can see you'll have a very easy sum of the forces with it. Uh, let's go back to the far left object now, the one that's sitting up on top. All right, try to not worry about this for right now. Just take a look at that block as it stands. That block there, you've got a tension to the left, we'll call T2. You have a M, you have an M1G going down. You've got a normal force. I'm going to call this normal force 1 going up. The reason why I'm calling it normal force 1 is there's two normal forces. There's a normal force of this block sitting on this one, and then there's a normal force because of this pushing back against the entire system. So we've got one more force. There is a force of, force of friction present. And again, ignore this object. If the tension is moving this way, that's going to mean that the friction must be working against this block. So that means we've got a mu 
mu n, and I'm going to call it mu n1 holding against that block. And now's where the hardest part's going to be. What is it going to look like for the center one? So for the three kilogram block, we've got a T1 pulling it to the right. But we've also got a T2 pulling it back to the left. Now, there's also going to be one more thing holding it to the left. You've got to remember, this friction between these two blocks up here, the top block is moving left, so the friction on it is to the right. The bottom block is moving to the right, so the friction on it is to the left. Now, here's the thing. It's the same friction that's on the other block. So, we've got a mu... N1 also acting against this block. Now, if there was a friction down here, we would also have a mu N2 going in that backwards direction. Luckily, we don't. I'm going to now do the normal force for that block. I'll call it normal 2. And now we've got to take into account here that down at this point, we not only have the M2G pushing down, the M1G is also, all of this is pushing down at this spot. So we've got the M1G and an M2G both directed down, but luckily we're not even going to need this in the problem. Now for the sums of the forces. And we'll start over here because we may end up needing a good bit of room. Sum of the forces X for the first block would be mu N1 minus T2 equals... Now, this is where you have to remember that trick. This block is moving to the left in our coordinate system. So I'm going to say is equal to negative M1A when I write it down. Sum of the forces Y would be equal to N1 minus M1G. That's going to be equal to zero. Some of the forces X on the middle equation will be T1 minus T2 minus mu N1. And all that's equal to positive M2A because it's moving to the right. Some of the forces Y is going to be N2 minus M1G minus M2G. That's going to be equal to zero. And we're not even going to use this sum of the forces Y because if you look, uh, there is no friction that uses the normal two, so we're not going to need it. Sum of the forces Y on our final object, there is no X component up here. So we're going to have T1 minus M2G equals uh, this object is falling. Oops, and I called this M2. That's M3. That's the uh, problem with the video is there's no one here to correct that you're messing up. So I did that already, almost calling that one the wrong thing. But this is falling down, so we're going to say this is equal to negative M3A. And there is our, uh, huh, turn it sideways, guess that doesn't help. But there is our completed sum of the forces. Uh, in the world of physics, the physics in this problem is over. There's no more physics to do in this one. This problem now is all about solving all this out. And I'm going to solve for A. And I've told you before, if we did this problem right, when it is all solved out, hopefully I'm going to have written out A times M1 plus M2 plus M3. If it, does, if it doesn't finish, I cannot draw a 3 today. Hopefully this is the way the problem finishes. If it doesn't, then I messed up. So let's go back up here. Up here, this is going to be, I'm going to go ahead and solve for N1. 
it'd be M1G, and I'll plug it in. So I'm going to plug in N1 for right there. So I'll have mu M1G minus T2 equals negative M1A. Let's solve this equation for T2 so that we can sub it in over here. So this would be mu M1G plus M1A equals T2. Over here, let's solve this equation for T1. T1 would be equal to M3G minus M3A. And now let's plug this in for T1. And let's take this T2 and plug it in. So we're going to end up with, this is going to be horrible, but we're going to do it, M3G minus M3A. Notice the negative when we plug in this T2. Minus mu M1G minus, because this negative affects this one and the M1A, minus M1A minus mu N1, and we already know that N1 is M1G, so I'm going to write mu M1G equals M2A. All right, it's all combined. Everything with an A I want over here. Everything without an A needs to stay over here. So I'm going to have M3G minus mu M1G minus mu M1G equals, and there's M3 and M1, they're both positive. So on the other side, it's going to be M1A plus M2A plus M3A. So now we can kind of finish this out. This over here will be M3G. Notice we got negative mu M1G, negative mu M1G. So this is negative 2 mu M1G equals M1 plus M2 plus M3. Exactly like I said before we started, we better end up or we know we've done it wrong. And I'm going to plug the numbers into this. This thing's big enough. So this is going to be 10 times 9.8 minus 2 times mu, which was 0.3, times M1, which was 2 times 9.8, equals uh, 2 plus 3 plus 10. 2 plus 3 plus 10 A. So now we're just going to do some calculating on this. Uh, 10 times 9.8 is 98 minus 2 times 0.3 times 2 times 9.8 is 86.24 equals, what we got here, 15A. So divided by 15, 5.7. So all of this work just to find that 5.7 in the problem. Uh, if you want to find tension, the easiest thing to do to find tension would be to come back to here now. Because we could go 10 times 9.8 minus 10 times 5.7. So right here we could get our tension so this is 98 minus 57, 98 minus 57. So this would be a 41 Newton tension for T1. So there's T1. T1 is 41.7. If you want T2, you can come back over here and solve for T2 now. So it's 0.3 times 2 times 9.8 plus 2 times 5.7. So 0.3 times 2 times 
9.8 plus 2 times 5.7, 17.28. And there you go. That concludes this big, massive problem that we just worked. Uh, hopefully you've done it and got it right. And finally, our Connected Object series is over with this last video. So I'll leave you as I started with 